Here we have a visualization program for molecular dynamics simulation results. This here is a relatively small simulation. It's only a few hundred atoms or so. This is a protein. You can see that there's a channel going down to this helix in the middle. If you look through here, this is the channel. So this is an ion channel protein. Uh, this is what lives in a cell membrane and, uh, and funnels ions from the outside to the inside of the cell. The visualization method here is relatively straightforward. We have a simple ball and stick model. So we have a sphere for every atom and cylinders for the bonds between atoms. We can also tweak this visualization using a very simple control. I can disable the bonds to only draw atom spheres. I can disable the atoms to only draw cylinders. I can change the sizes or the radii, I should say, uh, of both the atoms and the bonds. I generally like to set the, ad the radii of both atoms and bonds to 0 0.2 angstrom. That will create this sort of stick model with nice cylindrical and spherical caps um, that makes it sparse and not too complex once we have uh, once we have more atoms involved. Now this here is just a, ting a single time step from this ND simulation, so we have a static 3D model. Of course, generally we want to look at time varying data, and the way we are doing this in this program is to bring up the animation dialog, and this uh, data set actually has 1,000 time steps. And I can either browse through the time steps just by dragging the slider here, and you can see what happens. Um, or I can do it by uh, setting an animation speed. I'm going to set the animation speed to 15 frames per second as a good compromise. And then I can click on the Animate button, and the program will just uh, cycle through uh, cycle through the time, time steps. Now, right now, when I do this animation, the program loads time steps from external storage. These could potentially also come from a live simulation running on an external computer, but right now it is a pre-saved result. Uh, what it also does is the uh, output from the simulation only contains the 3D position of atoms and atom types, of course, elements. So when I'm loading in a time step, the software also reconstructs the bonds between atoms by looking at a very simple, uh, very sim based on a very simple neighborhood relationship. This is not perfect potentially, but so far what I've seen, it looks really good. It does a good job of reconstructing the bonds. Like here, this uh, tryptophan amino acid residue looks very nice, and all the others uh, look really nice as well. Now, as I said, this is a very simple uh, model, only a few hundred atoms. So once it's done here, we are already at uh, time step 850. Um, I'm going to bring in a more complex model, and then we can look at a couple of other options that we have to explore these things once the models get more complex on this very simple one. This is a more complex model. Uh, let me make this a little bit smaller. Um, here we are looking at a piece of a cell membrane and then a ion channel protein like the one we had before embedded into it. So if you look here, on the top level, we have a whole bunch of water. Then on the bottom level, we have a whole bunch of water too. Uh, here we have the, uh, the cell membrane with the, with the lipids making it up. And then all the way in the middle here, if I zoom in, uh, we can see the, the backbone of that protein that forms a helix and then the, and then the ion channel. Uh, let me adjust the, the rendering settings a little bit to make it look the same as we had before. Uh, and now this should be a little bit, uh, a little bit easier to see. Now this is uh, slightly bigger than the last one. In the last one we had about 500 atoms. This one here has about 40,000 atoms. But otherwise it works the same way. Uh, when I load in a time step, the program loads all the atom positions from an external file, reconstructs the bonds on the fly, which again it does a really nice job. You can see all these water molecules here, H2O. Uh, you can also see these isolated, these green spheres here. Those are isolated potassium ions. Those are the ones that uh, are tracked in the simulation to see how they move through the ion channel. And then, of course, we have all the, the lipids with their long chains. Uh, and then the protein uh, the protein in the middle forming this helix right around here. Now, unfortunately, I do not have very many time steps from this simulation. I only have 100. Um, so it's going to be a large step between time steps. It's not going to be a smooth animation. It's going to be jumping back and forth a bit, but we can still see how that works uh, when I go through the time steps. I'm going to bring up the animation dialog, set the animation speed as before to 15 frames a second, and keep in mind that all of this is done on the fly, so it's loading these 40,000 atoms from external storage. Uh, it is reconstructing the bonds on the fly and then drawing it in VR space. So here's what it looks like when I animate this. Uh, at, uh, at 15 frames a second. 
and you can see it works pretty well. Um, you can't really tell what is going on because everything looks the same. There's just, I don't know how many thousand water molecules here. And then you can see that these, uh, that the cell membrane, the molecules in there just jerk around more or less randomly. Uh, so here's where another feature from the program comes in handy. And that is we can tag individual atoms or subsets of atoms uh, for tracing them through the simulation. So what I can do is I have this yellow selection sphere around my hand here. Now I can go and touch this water molecule. Uh, and then you can see how this water molecule, now it is selected. Uh, each of the atoms gets drawn with a sphere that corresponds to the van der Waals radius uh, of, the, of the individual atoms in there. And so now as I go through time, we can see how this water molecule just jumped to the other side of the boundary. So I'm not actually sure where it is. This is just a repeating boundary conditions. You can see that this is actually a hexagonal subsection um, of a cell membrane where this is supposed to be replicated six times around and then an infinite number, uh, an infinite number of times. So let me maybe pick a water molecule that is not exactly at the edge. I'm going to clear the selection and then get one from here. Perfect. And then we can see if we can trace this one. Uh, let me also reduce the animation frame rate. I'm going to go down to 10 frames a second. So it's a little bit easier to track. And we just had the same thing up here. Too. So here's now this water molecule that's randomly going around. Like I said, uh, this is only every who knows how many time steps am I missing between the ones that I do have. So it's not a particularly smooth animation. But if you go in here and look at one of these uh, potassium ions, that are in this channel right now, then I can see like that. And now we can see if we can trace uh, this one individual atom as it hopefully moves slightly down in that ion channel. And here it goes. So now this is a lot more stable because it is confined by the channel. Right now it is at the outer, uh, at the outer boundary where there's the water here and then cell membrane to the left. And you can see that this one didn't really move throughout the simulation. So let's try another one. How about this one down here? And then see, and then I'm also going to select this water molecule that is in the ion channel together with the ion. And then you can see how that works. And you can see how these two are now sticking together. And they are still randomly moving around, just Brownian motion, I guess it's the word. Um, but it is very, very slowly moving this way. Let's pick another one that's a bit further down the channel. Let's see, there's another one right here and select that one. So one nice thing about using VR for this purpose is that even though there's 40,000 atoms and on a flat computer screen, this would look extremely cluttered. In VR, I can zoom in, I can immerse myself in the simulation and I can look at things that are close to me without much clutter and then things that are far away just shrink away in the distance and become, I can still see them as context, but they don't disturb my view. So it is much easier to see things uh, and to select things. Now, this one is interesting. That water molecule is moving nicely down that way, and then it's coming back, and this ion is jumping around quite a lot again. It would be nice to see the intermediate steps, but unfortunately, I only have that many time steps of this. All right, so much for this program. Let's have a look at the next one.